Hello, I'm Enar Martin, Customer Solution Architect at Broadcon. In this session, I will show you some of the new features in the DX APM11 Map and Metric Tree. Here we have the topology of an application. We can see the different components of the application and the relationship between them. APM map auto discover dependencies and topology changes. The topology represents the flow of the application and how the components are connected. We have the information from the user browser to the backend, in this case, a database. We have the transaction end to end definition of the application. APM allows us to see the application topology considering the application component, what we call the application layer, but it's also possible to see the infrastructure components that deliver the application. This is the infrastructure layer. So we have the option to visualize our application by the application component or by the infrastructure component element. A part of this, it's possible to visualize the application with different perspectives. With perspectives, we can organize the application relationship by using attributes. We will review attributes later. If we click on in a component, at the right in the component view tab, we have the information related to this component. In this case, we can see the information about the application component, the runtime environment, where the application is running, the pod where the application is executing, and the host where the container has been deployed. So if there is any issue, we are going to have all the information of the stack where the application is running, from the application to the infrastructure. Just at a glance, it's possible to visualize the health of the component, metrics, and attributes. At the bottom of the console, there is an access to the metric tree and the transaction trace detail. Now, in the map, the components of the application shows the number of transactions and the average response time. This information appears in the application layer. If you select the infrastructure layer, now we have the CPU and memory consumption for each of the elements. Imagine that we have an issue in the application. As we can see in the map, there is a problem in a component. We see the component in red. For further investigation and analysis, now we have the option to open directly the notebook analysis. Notebook analysis helps to isolate the problem and identify the most probably root cause of the issue. There is a video where I explain in detail how this works. Let's see now all the metrics that we are gathering from the monitoring element. The data is shown in real time and historically. In the method T in DX APN 11, you can use the search option. It is possible to select more than one metric from different elements. In this case, I have selected two metrics. Every response time are responses per interval. This is a, a, a backend, a database. As you can see now, on top, there are new options of visualization. Now, it's possible to visualize the metric in different ways. Now, I have selected differential analysis. What differential analysis is? To the application of machine learning algorithms and statistical techniques, it's possible to define the behavior of the applications, of applications in terms of performance. The solution will notify the anomaly that it detects in, in the behavior without the need of configuration, facilitating the early detection of problems. Let's see other options of visualization. In this case, I have selected two methods, average response time and average user CPU time. I have checked now the time range comparison. We can define the period of time that we want to compare to. In this way, it's very easy to analyze how the metrics evolve in time. In this example, we are combining two metrics. 
in the same graphical representation. Now we have gained flexibility to represent the metric. APM allows us to monitor the metric. When a threshold or condition is reached, an alarm is triggered. The alarms can have different severity, caution or, or warning or danger or critical. Now, in the metric P, the periods of time in which a metric has exceeded the threshold will be displayed. It's possible to see the detail of the monitor. And if we click on the gear, the definition and configuration of the monitor is open. Here in the metric C, I have the metrics from the different invocations to the application. In this case, I have selected the sign on of an application. At the right, I can select to see the traces of the requests that have been done and the errors. If I select the traces, here I have the requests that have been done. If I select one of them, the transaction view of this request is open. The transaction view gives a detailed information of a single transaction in the application. A transaction trace records, records, the application calls, database calls, and external calls. It's possible to use transaction traces to troubleshoot performance issues and to get detailed low-level insight into how the application is working. We see on top the components involved in the transaction, correlated, and the time each component took. If we select a segment, the tail information of this part, tail information is displayed here and here. If we select the errors, the requests with errors are displayed. Let's select one of these requests. Let's see. Here in the transaction view, we can see the problematic transaction, all the details of the components involved, and correlated, and in red, where the problem is occurring, and very important. Here, the error details. Here we can see the error message. There is a problem in an insert on a database. Let's talk now about attributes. Attributes are information that we associate to each element in the map. The attributes help us to combine filters and perspectives to investigate problems. It's possible to filter and organize the applications in different ways, depending on your interest and using the attributes. For example, we can be interested in a specific transaction or the components of the map where a certain person is working on. We can define multiple attributes associated to an element. As you can see on the right, some of these attributes are created out of the box, basic attributes. But we can also set attributes, in this case, custom attributes for each single element. There are multiple ways to configure attributes. One, we can enter manually we can enter them manually. Click on the element and add the attribute name and value. We can also create attributes rules to define and set attributes. What we can do, for example, if the host name starts with TES, I set an attribute with the value test environment. It's possible also to use an, an extension and a system extension is the using is by using the attribute decoration extension. This way, I can also populate uh, the attributes. For example, this agent extension allows us to use a file in the monitoring system to set the attribute. And finally, it's possible to define attributes via API. But attributes are more than a label in the map. Let's see in this example the power of attributes. Very, very important. Attributes are time sensitive. This is a timeline, and I have an attribute named application layer. The value is web portal, for example. The other attributes at this moment are, have the following values. 
with Defat? No. Release 1.5. No owner, John. Suddenly, an application error occurs and a hot feed is created. Now we, have, we can set the attributes values to the following. With defect, the defect number. The release is at this moment 1.5 hot fit 1. And the owner, in this case, in this period of time, is speed for the time that the hot fit is in place. Now we have the next common release with the hot fit included. Then I have no defect, a new release number, and the owner is Simon. APM keeps track of these changes, meaning that if we go back historically, we will see attribute changes. So once you have a problem, you can go back historically and see the whole state event in terms of attributes. Here, an example of a dashboard that has been created based on attributes. This allows to visualize at a glance that there is an issue in the New York Data Center. The tier affected is the end user tier. The owner is John, and the version is the version with the problem is 2.1. This is what you can achieve with a dashboard view and the attributes. DX APM 11 allows users to miss attributes from different layers from the application layer or from the infrastructure layer. That's what we call foreign attributes. These foreign attributes can be used to define universe, perspectives, and filters. As you can see in the sample, when searching for attributes, all the attributes from different layers are available. We have seen that what's new in DX APM 11 in the map and metric T. Hope this session has been useful. Thanks for watching.